Hey everyone, how are you going today? We're back and we're doing another SBC of course, but we're doing it quite a different way this time. First of all, I'm gonna to try to speed run it and do it in one without editing because it's gonna be a 30 degree day and I'm in the workshop and it's already really, really bloody hot here. Secondly, um, it's not necessarily all about this. We're not gonna look at it in the same way. We're looking at this, but for a very different reason. This is the Rock 4 SE from Radsha. Uh, I just bought this from DF Robot. You can get it from wherever you like, but I do like DF Robot, support them if you can. Um, it's a nifty little board though. So if we have a look here, if I've got autofocus turned on still, do I, do I not? There you go, well, I do, it's just really bad. Um, because it's quite a dense board. So it's got your standard Pi 2 header there. It's got inbuilt Wi-Fi, uh, wireless five, Bluetooth five, but only the onboard antenna. Wow, that autofocus is sad. Anyway, uh, you've got the option of PoE hats on there. You've got a display output option. Uh, you've got your camera input using a standard interface, USB-C on the go, full-size HDMI. I'm going to punch this camera. That... Logitech, stop making such fucking retarded cameras. I'm really sick of it. Um, anyway, you've got your TRS connector for your audio, gigabit LAN, USB 3, USB 2. And then on the back, you've got the SSC on the back, which is really strange. And you've got your RAM, M2, SD and EMMC. Oh my God, this camera. Hang on. All right, I don't know why they make cameras that are so bad at auto-focusing, but the Logitech cameras, besides good quality, are piss poor, as you can see. This is not, though. It is very strange that SOC is on the bottom there. I don't know why that design decision was made, but I guess it does have a pretty dense top. It could be for the sake of PCB routing, but you've got EMMC, SD, and M.2, which is pretty awesome. That is your little... Um, switch for boot selection. It also supports an RTC battery, which I think is really important. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna call it, but I don't think I'll need to, because this is a pretty OP uh, product to start with. So if it gets underclocked for the sake of thermal management, I'm not really that bothered. Let's go and have a look at the specs for it. So here we go. Uh, tick, 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 there we go. So we just saw that. We just saw all of that. It's a 3399T. So it's a dual core A72 and a quad core A53. So it is a little bit older generation, like A55 or anything like that, or A75 like you'd see. Um, Built-in GPU with the standard stuff, hardware encoding and decoding at 4K decode, 1080 encode, four gig of RAM, all those connectors we we're talking about. So that's a four lane PCIe 2.1, which is pretty epic in my mind. Not many actually implement all of the lanes are uh, M keyed like that. For, uh, two standard HDMI ports, so that's using the DSI interface and the HDMI interface, I believe. You've got your two lane MIPI CSI, which is enough for what we need. Wireless 5, Bluetooth 5, Gigabit, PoE support, all the USBs. Your four pin TRS, so that's going to be your dual stereo and microphone. Your 40 pin Pi 2 header. It sucks three amps, trust me, I tried it one, it crashes all the time. It needs at least two. Uh, three is ideal. And it can go up to 50C, which is good because I'm in Australia where that's like our sleeping temperature, basically. Standard credit card size form factor works with a pile of accessories. Now, downloads Debian and Android. And if we go to the Debian, we can see in their releases that it's a bullseye. We've got a CLI version, but really, I want Bookworm. Um, and this is the start of a little adventure. So the reason that this episode is going to be a little bit different is I actually do some 3D printing. I do a fair bit of it, if you didn't know. Let's, I'm just going to walk over and hit record over here so you can see what I've got going. I'm walking across the workshop, which I might show you sometime, busting out my phone, switching to video mode, and hitting record. So here I've got my 3D printers going, got my Anycubic wash station, my Elegoo Satin, that's a 4K SLA printer or MSLA. That's my favorite so far, I really like it, makes some neat stuff. The Anycubic uh, Photon Mono X6K, Anycubic's MSLA printers, in my opinion, are garbage. Uh, I hate this thing. The print quality is really low. The, the diffusion pattern from the light's really bad. I've had endless faults with it. Everyone else has agreed, but it's good for prototyping things. Uh, we've then got the new, I got into FDM just recently, like two weeks ago. I've got the Creality Ender 3 SE V3. Uh, so that's going right now, doing a stringing test because I've got this new PTG. Uh, I've then picked up for free this XYZ thing Da Vinci 2. Now these are also a crapshoot from what I've heard. So I'm gonna to have to get uh, Repetia or Repetia, I have it's pronounced, running on that, I think to make it work. 
and I've got a traditional paper and laser printer, but I do some 3D printing. And having bought this new thing has, get out of it, has introduced me to a whole world of hurt. I'll show you why. Let's go back to the computer. I've obviously, I've, you know, I'm used to slicing. I learned a little bit about it, especially from Maker's Muse, um, but I wanted to get the best settings and just slicing on its own is not everything. So people always comment on my videos, you know, will it run, I don't know, tinkers. Will it run Clipper? Will it run Octoprint? Things like that. I never knew what these terms meant, so I just Googled it. I was like, eh, it looks like it's supported. It honestly comes up soft, and I wonder if Octoprint. No, it doesn't actually say anything about what oh, typo. So, oh yeah, people have obviously asked on this. Um, I don't know if I just look up Octo. I swear they've had it. Octo. So I thought. Yeah, people have been asking. I thought I should learn about what this is, and then I came across Mainsail this week, and I was like, all right, this has got everything I need built in. I know I can just spend some money and buy a little crowdy clipper module, and these aren't actually a bad option. Um, the Sonic Pad, because oh, this I should go to the crowdy shop, because they're not too expensive, and they've got everything you need kind of built in out the box. Um, these Enders use the Marlin firmware. I think they're just a, a SIM32F103 or something, but it means they're widely compatible. And I thought this is just an all-in-one way to go. And then I scrolled down and I had a look and I was like, ah, well, I don't like using Raspberry Pis because I've never had good luck with them. Orange Pi, after the last video and all the backlash, I thought I do have them, but also these are pretty lightweight. I've only got fives, I think, and 02W, that's a bit light. This is in the works. And I don't have one of those yet, although I think I ordered one. So I'm going to have to do something different. And I thought, all right, what's, what's the go here? Um, so I went and had a look. Orange Pi 4 LTS is supported. What do you know? It's got an RK3399. Having a look at the board, it's also got Wi-Fi, HDMI, USB on the go, TRS, USB 2, USB 3, gigabit, some of the headers. It's going to be close enough that I reckon if that works, my, uh, my little... This one, the Rock 4 SE, should work too. The Rock Pi 4 SE, I should say. So, what we're going to do today is actually get Mainsail OS running on a different board. This will be sponsored by me, though, not PCBWay. So, if you're enjoying this content, you, viewer, like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference. Uh, also, comment. What I'll do this time, so... I'm aiming to get it working on this thing. I do have two, I might give one away, but it won't be in this video. Uh, what I'm gonna do is in two weeks, I'm gonna make another video about getting Mainsail OS running on something. And what I'll do is get it running on what you want me to get it running on. So if you've got a, an SBC that you think it should run on, I'll have a crack at that. Let me know what it is, share it with all your maker friends uh, on your socials, so your Instagram, your TikTok, Snapchat, Twiddle, X, I don't know what they're all called. And uh, so leave a comment below on what you want to see it made to run on and then share that, get people to upvote it. Whatever's got the most upvotes in about two weeks, I'll have a crack at that. Now this is taking me three days, three bloody days to get this far. And I'll show you why. If we go back to the desktop here, um, you can see they've got a pretty straightforward system of how it's set up. It just chews through these configurations. It's got the option for arm bin, which is where a lot of it is and it's just using these actions to build it. Um, so I thought, all right, we can probably just manipulate some of that, but also uh, there's RSDK, so I could use RB Ambien, but um, I'd rather do it with Radixar or Radsha OS using RSDK. And I thought this would be the right way to do it, so I spent three days doing it, and it turns out it's really, really hard. Um, if we go and have a look at my latest build, the bit I'm actually getting stuck on at the moment is that I've pretty much just configured the, uh, actually it's not even in there, is it? If we go and have a look at source, share, RSDK, configs, products. I've stripped this down to just give me 4SE with bookworm on CLI. <laughs> that uh, reminds me of, um, what do you call it? Cluedo, if anyone gets that reference. And then I've set it up to run it. All right, I've just had another crack at it this morning. It takes, oh, that was the scheduled one. It takes an hour or so to run every time, which is a pain. You can see it's building a fucking KDE image, and I don't know why. Um, got to dig through that. So 
giving up on that a little bit. And what I thought is I do have these images I started making before. And essentially all I've done is I've just written a little wrapper script here saying, make these images for these devices, blah, 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 blah. So first and foremost, we want to build our own image. We don't want the desktop or anything like that. We're going to want it to be compatible though. So I had a look at what they actually use in here. And if we go and have a look at the actions, build action, is it in there? No, it's not. It's going to be uh, under the configs. My bad. So config ambient default. You see in here, they've got their own ambient builds that they're making. So we'll probably want to actually copy what they're doing for the most part, uh, but we don't need to. Reason is I could just modify my script. If we go to my SBC images, all I really need to do, let's go git, git, git clone that. And I hope you find this interesting. I hope this, is this still recording? Yeah, thank Christ. Uh, CD, SBC images, copy, uh, CD, um, C, ambient, copy. All right, so in here, first of all, I don't want to bother with a SID build. I want it to be the 4SE. Don't need that line anymore. Um, it's not vendor, actually, it's current at the moment. There's no vendor image for that. What is wrong with me? And then we don't want legacy. Now, we are going to have to change some things here. So we don't want any of those or that. Probably going to want these. Then iterate through all of those. And then we're going to use the Ambien build system. So... Ah, oh, what am I doing? So, okay, build minimal because no, we'll leave that in. We don't need the desktop app groups or the app environment or the desktop environment config name. Uh, but we are going to need to do some other things. So if we flick back here and have a look at how they're building it, they've got a few extra things and we're going to need to make sure that we pinch them. So we're looking at the Pi 4 LTS the bookworm, all right, that's straightforward. That's just the config workflows build train. No, they've got a few more things in there. Just got to find the config that we want. Build image orange. Oh, neighbors' kids are having at it. Um, it is definitely in here. Let's have a quick search. I'm looking for something like equals fat. Here we go. That's what I was after. So we want to add some more things in here. Build opt equals image. Boot FS type equals fat. Now this is important because this also puts a petition at the start, which means it's a two petition image, not a one petition, which means another part can be used. And we don't want to compress Output image. Uh, the reason for that is because the build process for Mainsail OS will do that. So we've got current bullseye build opt image. We're adding in my packages that I want above. Apparently not. All right, they're just the desktop packages. Oh, yeah, no, I do have some packages there that I'm mentioning. I but I'm not going to worry about that. That's probably not going to be used because we did remove those other things. I'd have to set CLI packages, but I won't bother. So we'll also just add in, if it makes any difference, build desktop equals no. So we've got our board branch, not minimal, not desktop, image output, bootfs type, compress output image, kernel configures no, releases the release version that I want. That looks like everything from there. So if we now then run that against uh, the system, we are going to get an output and you can see, oh yeah, sponsored by me. As I said, Christ, I run this shop. Um, what I'm going to do is throw something free in. I'll put a link below to the shop and I'll include a discount code. Now, one of you, if you have a Anycubic Photon Mono X, I have over here, where's my camera? Um, 
drip holder that I made. I uh, just did this with an with um, PTG on the ender, so it turned out pretty nice. It's 20% infill, but it's PTG, so it's bloody solid. And this is a uh, drip hanger for your Anycubic. I realized though, the shaft size is slightly different. I had to remake it. Um, this I just ripped from Thingiverse. So if you buy something, I'll throw this in for you. Use the code below. Uh, I hope you've actually got a printer that will use it. Uh, otherwise, buy shit anyway. It helps make these videos. But now, back to what we're getting on with. If we go through and have a look, you can see under the Radshift folder, I now have the 4SE Bookworm Current CLI image that I put together. So that is what we're going to need. If we go to main sale OS, we're going to need to take a copy of that and we're going to need to make some quick changes. Now, it is quite handy. If you fork this, it comes with everything that you need to get going. It, what? Oh, uh, damn it. I'm going to have to delete this other copy that I've got. So let's just... This is me messing around with RSDK. Oh, I can actually break this from the fork, can't I? One tick, let me figure out that, I'll come back. All right, back at it. Um, I went through the process and said a ticket was raised, I can't be asked. So what we're gonna do now is just fork it as is like that. And we're gonna make some brief changes to this. Thankfully, it's not actually too hectic. So I'm just moving my recording notes. Um, since I tried so long to do this over the last week or so, I thought it would be worth actually making some notes. So now, if we just go home, git, clone this one, we can make some changes in here that are going to allow us uh, to build our own custom image. So whilst this clones, what we will want to do is go back to these SBC images. I'm going to need the file to that exact those exact downloads uh, because we'll reference those. So now if we go into main sale OS, first thing we want to do is go into the GitHub folder, workflow, config. Uh, actually there's, go into there and modify this because we don't want to build each of these every time. So I'm going to get rid of those and we're going to add ambient, radsha, rock, should I, put, should I put pie in it? No, no, just red uh, rock for SE. So that'll go there. I'm gonna copy that. Paste in there. Delete those. I know there's better ways to, I don't know what sound my speaker just made. Better ways to use Vim, but that will do. So then we're going to want to, want to go back and into the config folder, into Ambien, and we're going to copy the Orange Pi 4 LTS to Radsha Rock 4 SE. Now in here, we can start making some changes. So first and foremost, this isn't right, is it? Uh, that download base URL in the default file refers to their Ambien build, I actually just quickly show you that. So that's in here. We could change the base URL. That's using the releases. We can see a lot of other base things that we might want to change. Uh, we'll get back to that though. So in here, the checksum file is going to be here. So copy link. Oh, will that work? Should use download? No, copy. What's that? Copy raw file. Yeah. Sweet. So paste that of course, that does that. All right. Copy that link. Feel free to use my link as well, or uh, if you want to. I mean, I'm hoping that the MailSign main sale OS team will just merge this into their repository. And we just paste that same thing and take the SHA256 off the end. So you can see here, these are what I built before. Ambient, unofficial, 2411, trunk, rock 4 SE, bookworm, current. Doesn't say CLI, but pretty certain that's what I chose. Base arch, blah, 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 blah. Let's change some of this a bit. So it's gonna be rad, shah, rock 4 SE, and rad, shah, rock 4 SE in there. That's all pretty straightforward. That's like all you really need to do there, which is pretty neat. Um, there is a bit of a bug though. So if we go back to main sale OS and we're in the develop branch, has the pull request already been, oh, 
Oh, nice. They did it. So there should be, if we have a look at, uh, back in the room, if we go .github workflows and build images, let's jump to it, it was about line 64. No, 67. Yeah, it should have been here. How is this not merged? Let's just have a look. Oh, you know, because I'm in my own bloody thing. That would be why. So we do need to still add this in. There's a pull request to fix a little issue um, that just came up from the underlying OS, which is custom Pi OS uh, needing it. So we can see in here, there's just one little line that's added to two files. So we're gonna copy that. In here, we want custom Pi OS under the matrix config. What am I doing? Ah, oh, paste. And we also want that in release. And that's gonna be about line 143, yep. Paste. So, so far, uh, if we have a quick look over what we've done, we've cloned it. We, we cloned our SBC images, we made a CLI version and we've SHA'd and zipped that. We're then gonna use that. We've cloned, cloned mainsail OS. We've removed the uh, workflows that we don't want, which is gonna do the 4SE. We then copied the Orange Pi 4 LTS to Rock 4 SE and updated that uh, using our own URLs to point at my SBC image that I uploaded. We've then modified the two YAML files to add the custom Pi OS ref to specifically use version 1.5.0 to avoid an issue. Um, now, there is something else that we need to do. So if we go back into config, Ambien and just have a look at default here. You can see here root petition two. So that's the bit uh, I was saying before where we have to have the fat boot petition. Now, 2,500 is unfortunately not quite enough. Um, so I might be able to enlarge this in my custom uh, VI in here. I'm not sure if that overrides it or not though. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. Actually, if we, description. No, so uh, we'll just change it in default for now. And that theoretically is all we need to do. So if I got this right, this is actually correct. So we can go uh, git add star, git commit minus m add Radixer rock for SC based on Ambien from flat as repository. What's that? Uh, main sale crew Ambien builds update. Git push. So that's just pushed all of that straight through. I've probably missed something. Two files changed, 22 insertions, one deletion. Ooh. What the hell? No changes. Okay, so I must have added it. It didn't look like it added, but I'm also not very good at Git. So just be aware that, you know, I am not the sharpest tool in the shed. I used to use SVN years ago and never fully um, understood or moved to Git. I kind of stopped working professionally since then. All right, so we do have the new file that I was in. Got that change. And it is, uh, it's not showing the .github changes, but now, what we want to do is go and enable these actions. So we don't actually need a lot of these. What the hell just happened? There we go. Enable these actions. So we don't need a lot of them, but a lot of them are pretty much automatic based on the push. This would have started running automatically if I already enabled it, but we can run the workflow now. So in theory, this is going to be taking my Ambient image, custom Pi OS, and then merging all of the Moonsail OS changes into it and producing a new output file that should boot on this beautiful little SBC, or at least that's the goal. 
So we're going to let this run now for a minute. I'm going to pause it whilst it does because this video is only already 25 minutes long. And this is all, it, oh wow, it did not get that change. So let's abort this if we can. And uh, what's going on here? Cancel run. Let's have a quick, oh, I'm not even recording the right bloody thing, am I? There we go. Uh, yeah, so I've just cancelled it. Started building everything except what we wanted. So if for some reason it didn't pick up our change, if we go back, oh, apparently I can't type today either. How's that not come across? What? I don't fully understand what just, what's going on. All right, uh, work for conflict. How's it not? Okay. No idea why it did that. Again, I don't uh, fully understand Git, but remote rejected to develop, to develop, refusing to allow a person create or update workflow. All right, that's fine. I'll just go and manually do it. Let's just make sure that this now has, what is going on? Refusing to allow a personal access to create or update. Doing it just without. Workflow scope. All right, it's got to troubleshoot this back in a sec. All right, I just had to enable workflow for the uh, personal access token that I use. So now, if we go all the way back and have a look in here, that should have triggered the action to occur. And hopefully that's only gonna build there we go, the Radshow Rock 4 SE. So this is ticking away. Uh, it does take about half an hour or so. I'm sweating in here. To give you an example, it's 10.33 in the morning, as you can see on my screen. And if I grab my little thermometer, it's already uh, 30, geez, that's hard to see. It's already nearly 36 degrees in here. So I'm gonna go take my shirt off and stand in the fridge for a little while. 36 CNF in freedom units, 96, 97 degrees. So I'm sure you can understand that even with all the doors open, it's getting warm. I'm gonna let, that's what I was saying. I've got to get better at switching. I'm gonna let this run and I appreciate any input you have. I'll check back. Hey, there we go. There's a little 300 meg change and it's downloading our images. It can see, it's downloaded the images. It can see the petition. So this is gonna tick over. I'll come back to you when it's done and we'll have a look at how it went and what the next steps are for getting Mainsail OS going on the Rock Pi 4 SE from Radshaw. Hold tight. Alrighty, we're back and it's just finished a second ago. So it took 36 minutes all up and it flew through. So what we can do now is go back to the build process. So it was on workflow change and there are some artifacts there, which is exactly what we want. So we've got our build checksum 1020 we'll download that one and we'll download that one now i'm actually gonna not download them now because when you download them from an artifact in fact you'll see i'm on 100 megabit symmetrical fiber and this just churned so i'd already downloaded it yesterday i think it was when i was testing it um you see there i've got it i'm just gonna say two because i don't want to clobber that file i've already got yeah it's not going fast. I should be able to download that entire thing in like a couple of seconds. But that's because it's an artifact. That's how GitHub works. The main thing is we have our files. So what we want to look at now is if I just change back to the Brio, I'm going to make this autofocus one sec. Not autofocus. What I mean is I'm going to change the focus. So a few other things that we need to add to this now. First of all, we're going to need this EMMC. To flash that, I have uh, this little EMMC to SD adapter. I think I have some of these left in stock. I might even have some EMMC modules left in stock. Let's have a quick look. If we jump over to the shop, so it's EMMC, 
yep, I do have some of those. I have some of those left and they're only a few bucks each. So, yep, I have in stock. Don't know how many. I think I've got a dozen or so. Uh, oh, I've got less than a dozen of those then. So, and some 32 gigs. So, those are an option. I like them because they're nice and fast and easy to use. So, we're going to walk... You couldn't even see my screen. Um, bloody hell. I've... One day, I'll get better at this. So... There we go, on the shop, you can see I've got the EMMCs and you can see I've got the EMMC to micro SD boards and the EMMC modules in 16 and 32 gig and they're not badly priced. So if that's what you're after, come grab some. I like them because they're fast. So we have our board, EMMC and that. I'll get that out of the way. I also want to put this RTC battery on it and I will add a camera to it, obviously, for the functionality of Clipper. Now, I'm not sure if the MIPI CSI camera will work, but I'll give it a shot. There are some other things that you might want to change, though. So let's uh, let's flash this. I'll just clip this on, follow the little corner to where it should be. I remember, it will be a little bit crunchy. And then I'm going to insert this in the computer the way it goes. You can't see that, though. And if I get it the right way up, it's like a USB port. There we go. So if we come back to the desktop now, we'll go to those images that we downloaded. Oh, the computer's having a hard time for some reason. Where's my drink? For God's sake, hang on. Over in the fridge. Okay, apparently, there we go. It got there in the end. It wasn't happy about that for a moment. It downloads 4SE. We have that image from two days ago. What day is it today? Jeez, all right, two days ago I made that one. What's going on? That's the new one I'm downloading. That one. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to re-extract that zip from yesterday. I feel like that's probably the more sensible one. So now on Linux, we can just double click this and pick what we want to flash. Now, if you're on Windows, use Belina Etcher. It's very much the same. Uh, it's going to handle most of it for you, including extracting it. Uh, I'm on Ubuntu based. Oh, I'm on Ubuntu at the moment, so I've got the disk utility. I just use that straight up. Now, that's going to take a few minutes to flash. Then we want to make the, some last changes to it before we power it up. I'll pause this for a tick, and I'll come back to you when it's about done. Oh, by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you've made a half an hour into the damn video. You obviously do enjoy it. Um, those things, when you do, really help me out. Leave a comment, too, even if it's just a thumbs up. Otherwise, if you want to see me do this for more complex SBC or something else, hopefully I've got it, but leave a comment get people to share it and upvote it. And then in two weeks, the most upvoted post I'll do. Hopefully I don't have to buy the SBC, but as long as it's not something insane, I probably will. One tick. Now, whilst that's just finishing off, um, I'm gonna need a case for this. So I found uh, this bloke made one and I just downloaded the files. I had a look at a few options, slap into Cura. And the reason I like this one is it's got uh, slots for the camera connection and whatnot. Nice big fan space there that I'll use as well. Think that'll be big enough? If not, I'll just buy another fan to suit. So I quickly slice that and I've put that in the printer to go. So uh, if you're curious about my PTG settings, this one I'm running 55, 240 and 80. I'm using a few extra things as well. So fan speed turns on after the first layers. Uh, I'm not using any supports on this. Basic infill. Um, there are some more settings that aren't showing up here that I'll have to have a look at, but I'm using uh, some retraction and some Z-hop and whatnot. Is it going to show me everything? Wow, all right, that's showing me heaps. You get the idea. I'll share this profile once I get it right, but it's basically based off the Maker's Muse profile. So that'll take a few hours to print because I'm doing it at 0.24. Oh, probably I'm doing it at 0.16. I'm in... 0.24, but so, I oh know, it is 0.24 uh, with PETG so I can sand it and make it look nice as well. Now, that's done. What I'm going to do is eject it and I'm going to remove it and plug it back in because we will just want to make some changes. Here we go. Now, this is a good thing about using that ambient, which is much harder with RSDK. So, if we go to Media Owner Ambi Boot, we have here network config text template. So let's go copy network config to here. And we're going to want to configure this with our setting changes. So we want to change the defaults, enable Wi-Fi, set this to Pi-Fi, set this to Pi-Fi, one, two, three, 
four and set this to Australia. Everything else is pretty much as we want it. So CD home, back in files, we'll just eject those. And then we have our EMMC ready to go. We're gonna to wanna to put that on the bottom. I hate right way around would help. God, I hate crunching these things in. Uh, we'll put our battery connector in. Those tiny JST connectors can be a pain. And that's pretty much it. So I'll leave the camera off for now. We're gonna to have to enable that in the hardware overlays, which I'm hoping are supported. I'm gonna leave the big fan off. We don't need the adapter anymore. We don't have a case for it yet. All right, so after a raft of uh, USB serial problems on that computer, I flashed it again because essentially, uh, serial just doesn't work on that computer at the moment. So I've got it over here plugged in and you see it's got network activity. I'm also just printing a 3D case for it. So ignoring my technical issues, with um you know with this busted bits of system that i've got over there that is how to port moonsail os to a new board in this case it's the rock pi 4 se so i'm going to set that up mounted once this case is finished on top of this printer up here keep it out of the way and going to set up that eight megapixel camera once i get the hardware overlay set up and hopefully that'll be my new clipper controller for it so Hope you all learned something from that. Thanks for coming along and watching. There's a little ding ding for you. Don't forget to leave a comment below of what you want to see it ported to. Um, you know, if you if you have any ideas, I'm all ears. But if it's something interesting and gets enough upvotes, I'll try to do it. And don't forget to like and subscribe. So till next time, see ya.